coming from Edward Benito. Getting himself on the board as he is hovering over the ball. And the ball will roll. And 1904 will get the first touch here in this one. They go over to... Going over to the defenders. Then transitioning over to the right back. And one thing that we even notice here in this one as well is the turnout here in Canyon Crest Academy. And the turnout here have really been increasing and the 1904 fan base really has been going up. Yeah, slowly but surely the uh, crowd and the uh, momentum here in San Diego to support this team, even though, like we said, they haven't gotten a lot of results in their favor recently, but there's always that emotion that follows the team here in San Diego. And 1904 really taking the time to cross midfield. You can see that it's all mostly just the passing between the defenders, trying to see if they can get some space to work with and finally crossing midfield. And Herlo Paunesa finally getting a first touch there, and it will result in a 1904 throw in. Well, the weather definitely cooled down in the last couple of hours, so I think that'll be a benefit for the players. Recent home games for 1904 has been kind of hot, and that's kind of caused some exhaustion, but I think this kind of setting will be beneficial for both sides. Very strange having that drive from LA and coming here, it being very cloudy, the temperature's dropping very much so as soon as you coming down on the five, coming down to San Diego, very different temperature coming from LA. But 1904, very accustomed to this weather. Gonna try to use it to their advantage. Go to their goalkeeper, Austin Rogers. Rogers. Trying to boot that one to his defenders. We haven't really seen Chattanooga get a touch here. Here's the first one for them. And already going to the 1904 side of the pitch. And right away, 1904 coming up with a key takeaway. Dallin Cutler coming up with a through ball over there on the right flanks, trying to give it over to his striker, giving it over to Herlo Baronesa, trying to get through his mark, getting inside of the 18-yard box, and gets a shot. But well read by Alec Reddington. Good pressure by 1904 in the first couple of minutes. This is the type of momentum you want to keep up for the full, whole first half. And why not put the pressure early on? See if Reddington, see if he's one of the elite goalkeepers in Nisa. Yeah, especially for Alec Reddington, somebody of his caliber. I'm sure it's uh, kind of sticking out to him that he gave up that goal in the final minute in their previous match. So he definitely wants to uh, get that out of the way. And I would say there's definitely a sense of urgency for both of these goalkeepers for them allowing a last-minute goal for each of these teams. As there's a battle here in the midfield. 1904 starting to speed up their play. Wolfgang Prentice going to the races, going on the right wing, trying to push forward inside of the 18-yard box. Another shot! Alec Reddington handling it well. Both attacks coming from the same side. 1904 picking up something on that side that they can exploit. Take a look at the shot once again. Definite shot on, shot on target there for Wolfgang Prentice. And have to like the aggression here by 1904. They find any little room that they have to work with and they take it and they're not afraid to pull the trigger. Really looking to change up the game plan. You said that 1904, they are a big fan of the late dramatics. Maybe they want to change things up early on here in this match as opposed to scoring one late in the half. Get something going early. And here's a free ball coming in for Chattanooga FC. The ball will go the other way. And 1904 has to be of the mindset that they can't control what the teams ahead of them are doing. Certainly not LA Force or Detroit FC. So i got to focus on each game, get the three points, and let the chips fall where they may at the end of the season. Detroit City FC and LA Force, the battle of the ones and the twos going on right now. It'll be a very interesting one if Detroit City FC comes up with those three points. It'll be a huge three points to make their lead a six-point lead in the top spot of the NISA table. And as for LA Force, if they win it, they'll be all tied up. And here comes the attack for Chattanooga going up from the left wing. Tries to get the cross. No one to find there in the 18-yard box and a very clear whistle there going against Chattanooga. Unlucky there for Chattanooga. It was a nice cross that got deflected. 
unfortunately for them, the player wasn't in position. And now we got a call here and a foul. Cameron Woodfin being called with the whistle. In match number one against Maryland Bobcats, 1904. Getting the score very early. Romario Lomeli coming in in the eighth minute to even up the score. As in minute number four, it was Mohamed Sese who came in with a goal. But here comes Chattanooga FC and... Very nice read there by Samuel Strong, hitting that one to his goalkeeper, Austin Rogers. Good communication there by both players and good reaction by Austin Rogers. Got to have that communication. That is number one. If communication is offline, uh, you could be seeing Chattanooga capitalize on a mistake. And some of the goals, too, that the 1904 FC has given up this season have been because of a lack of communication, unfortunately. And if you're 1904, that's something you really do want to limit on as the last couple of matches, they really have been lacking the defense, if you ask me. Detroit City able to sink in three goals on the first meeting on Saturday, August 21st, then allowing three goals against Maryland Bobcats, two against the LA Force, then four against Michigan Stars. And I could definitely say Michigan Stars did not forget about that last minute game winning goal by 1904 in match number two of the year. Yeah, so far that's been the highlight of the season for 1904, that dramatic two to one win when they were down, they had to score two goals in the final five minutes. Hopefully they can remember that if they wanna pick up the three points here. So Rich Dixon, familiar face for Chattanooga FC, doing a smart idea, booting that one away, putting a stop to the 1904 attack. Chattanooga having to come from a long way as well. Currently with a 1-1-3 record as there's a cross from Cutler and trying to boot that one in. Chattanooga, the defenders getting to work here. Good reaction by the Chattanooga defender. Close to a dangerous play, but didn't get the call for 1904. And trying to get the through ball, looking for Brian Bemmett. So a very quick chain of events here in this match. Brilliant through ball for Dallin Cutler with the through ball. Looking for his man. Just a half second late for Herlo. Was looking for Baunessa in that one, but then right away, what we didn't get to mention was the fact that Chattanooga was flying down the pitch, and here comes 1904. Here they come with the attack. It's a three on one. Still able to get through his mark and a shot and saved. What? Alec Reddington coming in with a big time save. What a save by Alec Reddington. Right? He had to extend fully with both arms. Just a complete rifle shot right here as we see in the replay. Matt Herlow doesn't hesitate from outside the box. Reddington's right there. So with that effort, that'll give 1904 a corner. Corner for Jerry Desdunes. Desdunes going to be in charge of the corner. Checker piece is moving inside of the 18-yard box. A header attempt. That ball is still good. And once again, Reddington just doing a phenomenal job tonight. Coming in with some key saves, especially the last one, and reading this corner well and not allowing 1904 to get a second chance. But you see the consistent pressure from 1904. Alec Reddington's being forced to react and he's in a position where the defenders and him need to communicate a little bit better. So far it's been a pretty lopsided match. 19-04 in pretty good control. Chattanooga just trying to change things up. They have been playing in a rather quick tempo and trying to slow it down a little bit more in their favor. Trying to boot that one to the 19-04 side of the pitch. They do just that. Trying to see if maybe the midfield players can maintain control. There's Chattanooga. Through ball, working that one very quick, looking for Brian Bement. And Cutler trying to boot that one away, but still running into some white jerseys. Chattanooga staying persistent here in this attack. Well done by 1904. 
Couple of volleys here. As Bennett still trying to fight for the ball. Long through ball. Looking for Edward Benito. Free ball. You have to work this one really quick. Reddington booting that one another second. And we could have had trouble with Edward Benito. And here comes Chattanooga FC trying to work very quickly. Dumping that one inside of the 18-yard box. Trying to get across last minute. Offside call. And the flag does come up for the linesman. Really close play. Bang, bang. You see just a little offside, and that's where he got caught. James Kazak was trying to lead the attack there for Chattanooga FC. So far, both teams, if this were a boxing match, you'd give the first round to 1904. But based on that last possession for Chattanooga, you could see them trying to, to respond to the momentum and trying to even things out. We're in the 11th minute here in Canyon Crest Academy. Alex Naveja alongside of me is Hector Trujillo. You guys are watching the 11 Sports via TV Emax. Very similar, very identical teams as far as you look at the numbers aspect are concerned. Two teams, very identical records as well. Two, one, and four overall, both with seven points. Both tied ninth for the standings in Nisa. As this one is dumped inside of the 18-yard box, there's a header, free ball! Good reaction by Austin Rogers there. There was no defender inside, he was the last guy there to prevent the goal. Marcus Nagelstad was in the neighborhood, definitely trying to knock on the door and see if Rogers would let him in, but Rogers. Another half second, and not sure if we'll be looking at a scoreless match. Seen some pretty good quality shots on goals already. A lot of action coming from Matthew Herlo Pronesa for 1904. Pronesa really has been active tonight. A lot of pressure being put on the strikers for 1904. Not allowing the defenders for Chattanooga FC to get to work. Yeah, definitely a lot of battles in the midfield right now. Every little possession, every little angle they're trying to take and win the ball back in the 50-50s. Free ball, who wants it? A couple of volleys. 19.04, trying to maintain the control. Looked like Chattanooga was going to be coming up with it. Still battling it out, and there's Chattanooga coming up with it. Trying to lead the attack. Slowing it down. There's the cross. There's a shot it's off the crossbar. I don't know if that was a shot or he was trying to center that to somebody, but it came out like a shot and it just missed the goal. Hit the top of the crossbar. Austin Rogers had no business on that one. That would have been a golasa right there if that would have gone in. Just the amount that the ball was bending, just trying to bend that one in at that top part of the crossbar. James Kasak once again acting like a striker today, coming in as a defender. Really has been setting up the pieces for Chattanooga. A lot of action coming from Kasak. Yeah, you can tell Chattanooga is picking up the pace a little bit more here after the first 10 minutes. Definitely the game is much more even now. And check out the pressure being put on Rodgers. At least looking at Nagelstad, Hernandez, and Bement sticking around close to the 18-yard box, just a couple yards shy. See if they have anything planned here for the throw-in. He's definitely getting a lot of space for himself. It's going to be all the way into the box. And definitely trying to dump it in. Well done by the 1904 defenders, booting this in a way, but Chattanooga coming in out of nowhere. It's a couple of battles going back and forth, 1904, keeping this one alive. Give back over to the veteran Cutler. Maybe one of the biggest tenure for 1904, been here for quite some time. And here they come with a good counter attack, and the flag goes up offside. That was definitely close. I'm not sure he was off on that one. I'll have to see the replay, but... Again, more pressure by 1904. See here, as Dundes, Matt Herlow. Ooh. Pretty 
close. Pretty close. That's close as they close as you can get on that one. And once again, just getting these through balls to Matthew Herlo Paunesa. This is a guy that could be pretty dangerous for 1904 and trying to incorporate him in as many plays as possible tonight. And he has been pretty dangerous. The score doesn't show that, doesn't reflect on it, but he has been absolutely lethal. And that's something that he's been known for for his career. He's played in different levels. USO Championship, Nisa, obviously. He's got a nose for the ball and nose for the goal. Des Dunes has a pretty good act for handling the ball well. Samura to Cutler. Cutler to Prentice. Prentice trying to duke it out. Keeping this one alive. To Gomez. To Paunesa. Samura. And trying to look for Wolfgang Prentice. Deflected away by Chattanooga. Good reaction by the defense right there. If that ball gets through, it's a one-on-one -on -one for, for 1904. Four would decide to press the restart button with the defenders at the midfield. Back over to the right back. Has some space to work with. Finds that he gets bombarded by Chattanooga. And for safety measures, they give it back over to Rogers, but slowly but surely the pressure is coming. Bement. Hanging around close. Got the throw in for 1904 here in the midfield. Still possession for 1904. A lot of action in the midfield, even though there have been some scoring chances for both teams. And you want to talk about some scoring opportunities. Chattanooga, just like their counterpart, they had a pretty hot start to their year as well. Chattanooga FC within their first three matches they were able to score seven goals in just three matches seven yeah very impressive anytime you can score more than two goals per game that's always a good offensive statistic to have long season see if they can bounce back from similar to 1904 they started off good their first couple games they're trying to do the same and here's a good series of passes looking very promising here for 1904 there's the cross missing his mark was looking for Edward Benito, hoping that he can get goal number two on the night. Maybe if he grew out his hair a little bit more, <laughs> maybe he could have gotten some help there. Absolutely. The hairline didn't help him on that one. Maybe it's better to keep the hair a little long. Maybe you get a little help from the hair to be able to get some clear headers. I wish I had that problem. The hairline's not helping me either right now, so I can totally concur with that. Maybe you have yourselves maybe like a Dragon Ball Z type of haircut. <laughs> something like Goku or maybe even like Vegeta having the hair stick up like that. Yeah, I blame genetics for my situation actually. So minute number 19 here in Canyon Crest Academy. We remain at Goose Eggs. Alex Naveja alongside of me, Hector Trujillo on the 11 Sports via TV Emax. And like I've been saying throughout the match, do not let the score fool you folks. Don't even, don't even try to blink, if you ask me. And it looks like there could potentially be a yellow here in this one. Hard foul for Chattanooga. Yeah, Samuel Gomez came in hard on that one. A little unmeasured for that contact, as we see here in the replay. Ball comes through. Possession. And he does get him with the shoulder. Probably a good yellow card on that one. Pretty clear-cut yellow, if you ask me. And he's still down, actually. He got in his bell rung for that contact. Might have need to see the trainer for this. Check him out. Still on his knees right now. It's been over a minute. Looks like it was a shoulder tackle almost at the cheek. It's a pretty tender spot right there. Let's take a look at this, this replay once again. Yeah, definitely the shoulder. Daniel Strong, definitely coming in strong on that shoulder tackle. We still haven't seen the trainer come in yet. That's a surprising to me. We're, yeah, somebody's waving, waving in the trainer right now. So. 
So from number 24, Samuel Strong connecting with number 24, Sean Hofstadter. Not the guy that you really want to see go down for Chattanooga. Everyone out there from Chattanooga definitely holding their breath right about now, hoping that nothing goes wrong for Sean Hofstadter. A definite striker, a big name being created in the National Independent Soccer Association. You can see him getting checked out right now. The typical fingers, how many fingers do I have up? What day of the week is it? Looks like he's going to continue with the game. He just needs to catch his breath, but that was a that was a hard foul. And has every right to really take his time on this foul. Some pretty hard contact as Sean Hofstadter coming into this match with two goals. The first one coming in in the 81st minute against Dumptown Athletic Club. And the second one coming in in the 30th minute at LA Force. That was definitely a very fun match taking in over at Santa Ana. And very fun one there. Unfortunately, Chattanooga FC couldn't get the job done against the Force. But here we go, back to action. And they go right away with the cross. And it's 1904 coming up with it, but it ends up at a Chattanooga FC, one of the midfield players. Trying to dump balance out of the 18-yard box. And Rodgers, look what he take it himself. Yeah, Chattanooga FC tried to get the angle for the shot there, but the defenders for 1904 stayed on him, didn't let him turn around for the shot. Good reaction on defense. We were talking about early on Chattanooga FC with two matches with three goals scored. 3-0 victory against Mar the Maryland Bobcats FC. Winning that one three to nothing. That was the most the tied for the most goals scored. The Another foul here on 1904, and the referee's gonna have a talk with him. Maybe not pull the yellow card on this one, but he definitely showed some cleats on that one. So just going to talk to him, tell him the next one you might get it. So we'll see the replay here. 1904, the physicality part of the match definitely starting to pick up here for 1904. He did get to the ball first. He did touch the ball first. But when you leave your foot up, just even for a brief second, the referee's not going to play around with that. Nick Spielman hovering over the ball at the moment. Looking to see where, where is he going to shoot this one at. Goes short. Didn't think anybody from 1904 was expecting that one. Through ball. Looking at the right flanks. And it was a battle for the ball. Up in the air. The ball will go the other way. Yeah, the uh, Chattanooga FC player did not go for the ball there. That's the situation where the other player does go for it. He's going to fall. Kind of like that, just we saw here in the replay. Makes the play for the ball, Chattanooga doesn't. Unfortunately, you see those way too many times in the football game. Edward Benito trying to go up and a challenge Chattanooga for the ball. There he comes, 1904. We'll see what kind of run they'll have here in this attack after the long pause taken by Hofstadter. Good ball rotation by 19 over four here. Chattanooga Samura. steals it though. Samura losing the footing off of the ball. Long through ball was looking to launch down to Brian Bement. And Bement, he's going for the races, trying to see if Rogers can make a mistake here. Rogers, very good at what he does for 1904. Cutler using the space that's presented to him, still looking around. See Chattanooga playing back, not putting the pressure. There it is, getting that pressure. Chattanooga getting the free ball. Bement, free pass. Now here comes Chattanooga FC coming up with attack. Yeah, you saw a bunch of guys bunched up there for Chattanooga FC. It was just a matter of seconds before they got the ball back, and here they are on the counter. Dixon to Kasek to the captain of the night to Juan Hernandez right back to the center back through ball straight to Dolan Cutler
Dixon to Kasak. And Herlo Paunesa trying to come up with it, putting some pressure on the defender, Sean Russell Jr. Tried to make a little cheeky move there, Matt Herlo did. Almost worked out for him, but now it's uh, going to be a throw in for 1904. Cutler, throw in. Put it in to Benito. And the whistle. And it'll be a set piece coming in for 1904. Very lethal territory. Dangerous position here for 1904. You got good guys with can score goals with their head. Matt Herlow being one of them, obviously. And we got some tall there got some tall players out there going into the box. See what kind of uh, ball in we get here for 1904. Jerry that's doing this. Over the ball, along with the uh, newly acquired Jonathan Caparelli. Big question is, who's coming up with it? Desdundes, Caparelli, Desdundes, and it's Alec Reddington. Yeah, Alec Reddington saw that the whole way. No stress for him. He's seen those a, a thousand times. Just the composure that he's bringing into this match. 1904, they are just launching the ball at any angle at him, and he is just showing no pressure on him. He has a poker face throughout this whole entire match. No problems. Mighty fine goalkeeping tonight. And remember, he's already come up with a pretty key save early on in the match. And he's de definitely been a consi consistent feature for Chattanooga FC in the last few seasons. As we were saying a while ago, this season hasn't started off very well, but there's a long season for both teams, so... Through ball. Benito. Let's that one get by him. Throw in for 1904. Herlo Panesa. Actually, let Wolfgang Prentice get a piece of this throw in. On the 28th minute here in Canyon Crest Academy. Alex Naveja alongside of me. Hector Trujillo on the 11 Sports via TV Emax. Thank you so much to each and every one of you guys for tuning into this one for Saturday night NISA action. Wolfgang Prentice, there he is with the cross! Oh. Right off of the crossbar! 1904, still trying to attack. Still in the 18-yard box, trying to come up with another shot. Blocked off the volley, and nothing, nada to show. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And it hit right off the crossbar, point-blank range. Got to be so frustrating for 1904 because they have created the better chances so far. We watch the replay right here. Wolfgang Prentice. Cross. Matt Herlow right there. It would have been a nice goal. And we see the ball just fly away here. But more pressure coming in from 1904. Herlow Paunesa coming in. All he had to do was just tap it in. Overcooks it just a slight bit. Not to his liking, right off of the crossbar, then the midfield player Edward Benito coming in and trying to finish up the job, but another shot that is overcooked for a 1904, but maybe now that was maybe the best look that 1904 has had all night. Definitely the best look. See if the players don't get frustrated that they're still 0-0. Plenty of time left. Through ball. Deciding to play this one slow, Marcus Engelstad was trying to come up with the attack. He knew that if he kept going, potentially the, the flag from the linesman would have gone up. Didn't want to waste that potential opportunity for Chattanooga FC. Dallin Cutler with the throw in, still 19.04 possession. Dallin Cutler doing doing double duty this season as a player and an assistant coach, so props to him. Very interesting. Nice to see a coach on the pitch as well and to be able to assist his team on and off the pitch. Prentice, a little three on two there on that right corner. Bement gets that one taken away. 
Prentiss. Orchard's midfield player. Chattanooga is good at bunching up when they see the ball right there in dangerous positions. Making 19 of 4 throw the ball back. Defenders for Chattanooga FC really have been pretty busy. They've had their hands tied. Very occupied. Well stopped there by Samura. Soleiman Samura. Midfield player for 1904. Been getting some pretty crucial touches here in this match. One of those players again with experience in different levels of professional soccer. San Diego Lowe being one of them. Had an appearance with them in 2020. Now with 1904. San Diego Loyal, the other San Diego team, part of the USL Championship League. They're in action tonight, actually, at uh, I think it's Las Vegas against the Lights. Oh, against the Lights. Yeah. So you can imagine a lot of San Diego fans made the trip to Las Vegas. Any excuse to go to Vegas, you know. Hey, you know what? I can't disagree with that one. And <laughs> I think any reason to go to Vegas is a very good idea. That's always a good thing about having a team here in SoCal. Just make having a reason. Hey, you know what? Being here at the San Diego fan, being a 1904 fan, or even as a San Diego Lights fan, being able to go to Vegas and see the lights in action against the Loyal. That's uh, going to take it quickly to the action. Well done there by Dolan Cutler, putting a quick stop and a silencing Chattanooga FC there on the attack as Benito to Gomez. Trying to get that right flanks. Well, was looking for Jonathan Caparelli. And as the minutes pass by here, I think both teams are settling, settling into themselves. Even though if you had to go with who's been play, playing more offensive, it'd be definitely 19-04. See in the final 13 minutes what reactions both teams have. It's been a fun one already here in Canyon Crest Academy. Got to have a great turnout here in Canyon Crest Academy. The energy is amazing. Earlier there was a band playing. Oh yeah, we got our fix of Metallica, we got our fix of Ozzy Osbourne, ACDC. Good vibe to start off the game. Had some rock vibes. Then maybe in the final 30, 45 minutes before this one started, it was the typical playlist going on here in Canyon Crest Academy. I just wish they took requests. I was hoping for uh, <laughs> some Guns N' Roses, but I'll, I'll hold, I won't hold my breath for next time. Hey, th maybe there's always a next time. <laughs> And the outsiders here in attendance, as they usually are, getting the kids fully involved with waving of the flags, trying to get the fan base involved. They definitely have had a lot to cheer about, still waiting to erupt and jump out of their seats to cheer for a goal. 1904, they have been working all night long. And here we go, 1904, good ball rotation again, Dallin Cutler. Cutler, the cross. Switches up the field to Edward Benito. Benito, just like Hector mentioned before, just that good compression, that pressure. And there's the cross, looking for Herlo Paunesa. There he is with the ball, tries to get rid of it and ends up getting stuck on the grass. He's looking for a call there. There was definitely a push, but not enough to get the PK. I think he cut off his own angle. He tried to extend the ball to the right, but hey, it was worth a, worth a shot. Sean Russell Jr., the defender for Chattanooga FC, had the responsibility to have to mark Matthew Herlo Paunesa. Starting to see Chattanooga. Trying to establish somewhat of the passing game, just trying to see, hey, where are the holes at right now? Just trying to pass it around. Decide to go with a long through ball. Well done by Samuel Strong to boot that one away. Yeah, everybody was back for 1904 right there. It was kind of hard for 
Chattanooga to do anything, but at least they got the throw in and see if they can try something here. You can tell that Chattanooga, they're going to go deep on this one. Trying to get as many pieces inside of the 18-yard box as possible. Free ball. Who wants it? 1904. Kicking down away. Chattanooga trying to stay persistent. Now it's 1904. Oh, this so and the flag goes up once again. You know, it'll be interesting seeing the replay on this one. It might have not been Paunessa. It might have been Wolfgang Prentice. We'll see. But since he made a play for the ball, it's got to get caught. That is hurt, actually. A little bit. You saw both Wolfgang Prentice and Matthew Hurlow Paunessa both going after the ball. Referees blowing the whistle right there, telling them put the ball back a little bit. There's a set piece. Using that left side. Got a handball here, Chattanooga FC. Referee picked up on it. Cameron Woodfin was over the ball for Chattanooga FC. And even though it's 0-0, it's been quite an entertaining first half, you know. Both teams creating chances. Obviously, 19-04 with the better ones. But I think if the teams are able to keep up this tempo for the rest of the game, it'll be an interesting match for everybody. So Chattanooga FC, they are 0-0-2 when it comes to them being on the road. Just haven't been able to win a match away from Chattanooga. Looking for that first one. Yeah, and people always refer to that typical, you know, win at home, tie at least tie on the road. But, you know, when you got the teams ahead of you, like Detroit City and LA Force pulling away, getting wins left and right, you know, even the tie seems like a loss. So this is definitely a must win for both teams. You already know both of these teams have already it resulted in a tie last week between these two. Yeah, back-to-back 1-1 -back draws in the last few matches. So we might see this one happen. Oh, we got a chance here for Chattanooga, but good reaction by 1904. Nice reflection there by Shandon Wright for 1904. The 1904 defenders have been doing an excellent job being able to read the Chattanooga attack to allow their to help their uh, their goalkeeper Austin Rogers yeah Austin hasn't had much work so far he has had a couple times he had to come in and we got a center here by and there's a cross and once again 1904 having an answer another to Chattanooga another handball sorry another handball here on Chattanooga but Chattanooga at home Two, one, and two. Even at 500 in the last five matches, they are one, one, and three. Last match that Chattanooga FC won was on August 21st again against Maryland Bobcats. Three to nothing. Yeah, Maryland's definitely one of those teams that's uh, a question mark for me. Every time I see him, I, I expect... What I see is a physical match every time you... But they got the talent to compete with anybody. And they always give, no matter whether it's Detroit City FC or who, you name it, they always give that team a hard time. So I expect good things from them in the coming coming seasons. And Maryland Bobcats, that's a team that really very much is up on the rise as well. Michigan Stars right now, that's another team that is coming up. And going to be a team that we'll be talking about in the future just looking at the table Michigan Stars right now occupying that third spot on the table with 13 points right below them Cal United Strikers oh yeah we can never forget about Cal United they're always a competitor they're always going to be in the uh, conversation for contenders Strikers 3-3-2 three, three record. Just 12 points. Through ball. Goes straight to Rodgers. 
We're here at the 40th minute, folks, here in Canyon Crest Academy on 11 Sports via TV Emacs. Alex Naveja and Hector Trujillo with you guys, bringing you Saturday night action. 1904 against Chattanooga FC. A little more methodical movement here by 1904. In the final minutes of the first half. You gotta wonder, and uh, here's a whistle. See, is it enough for a yellow? Maybe got cleated on that one. It's Herbo yep. Baunessa. It's coming out. He's been consistent, I'll give him that. He's calling, uh, he made the same call on 1904 for their yellow. We see the replay here, it's kinda like the exact replica of that play actually. Came in strong, got him from behind. Didn't even touch the ball, so a correct yellow, I think. Well, a yellow for a yellow, a yellow in the 19th minute to Samuel Strong. His shoulder tackle over to Sean Hofstadter, but it's Chattanooga FC now coming up with a yellow and uh, fouling Matthew Herlo Baunessa. So consider it just you foul one of our best players, we're going to foul one of your best players as there's a cross inside of the 18 yard box. It's Chattanooga FC booting that one away, trying to race for this one. 4 see if maybe they can get a goal before finishing up this first half. There's the cross. Well done there. Yeah, good deflection. Good deflection by the defender there. 1904 was coming in for the head-on attack. Corner kick for 1904. It was Richard Dixon that was there heading that one out. Here's the corner for 1904. This one rather low. Free ball. This one is skied. 1904. Still maintaining the possession. There's a throw in. Yeah, 1904 picking up the pace a little bit here in the final minutes. I think they know deep down they should be at least up 1 0 right now because of the chances they've created. So, let's see if they can score one in the final three or so minutes. I think we could be expecting maybe three, maybe even four minutes uh, of stoppage time potentially. Yeah, with the yellow cards and the fouls, we got another one here. Been a pretty chippy game, all things considered. I think both teams they got a foul right there. Good call by the referee. The, phys the physicality of the match is definitely picking up as <laughs> Herlo Paunesa having a quick word. That's Jerry that's doing this. Potentially trying to tell him where to locate this set piece. He's got two options here. Goes with the center into the box. So it's well placed. Still up. But it could. I think he called contact on 1904. I didn't see a flag go up. Not offside. Potentially some contact there for 1904. Kind of ticky tack for me, but uh, like I said, he's been consistent. He's not going to let the game get away from him and get too chippy. Cutler booting that one out, looking for Benito. Reddington. Thought about picking that one up with Benito adding some pressure on there. Long through ball there for Chattanooga. Wasn't very successful. And quite frankly, not a lot of action from the strikers for Chattanooga FC. Very quiet half for Bemet, Hernandez, and Nagelstad. Got a foul here on 1904. Yeah, Austin Rogers hadn't had much to do today. There was that one that hit off the crossbar. I'm still not convinced that was a shot, but it'll go down as a shot. So I think both teams, you know, if it ends here 0-0 in the first half, make some adjustments, 
possibly some substitutions, create more chances, and they both know that they need to come out with the win today. They can't settle for another draw. I think the second half will definitely pick up for both of these two teams. Both of these teams very much second half teams. Making a lot of things happen in the second half as we're at the 45 minute mark. And it'll be one minute of stoppage time. That could be enough for 1904. We'll see what's to come here. Benito having plenty of space. Have to pull, come up with a shot blocked by Chattanooga. Alec Reddington was beat on that one. His defender totally bailed him out. 1904 had time there. It wasn't a bad shot. It was just it went right to the defender. What a shot by 1904. They have been hunting all night long, getting great quality shots like that. And that's all she wrote, folks. It was done to be able to keep it. Hey, you foul one of our best players. We're going to do the same thing as the ball will roll. And it'll be Chattanooga FC starting off with the first possession here. Chattanooga did make their first substitution of the game. There they go, trying to come up with the first through ball here in the second half. Daniel Jackson, midfielder, coming in for Chattanooga, start of the second half. Daniel Jackson, a big piece of the offense for Chattanooga. One of the big four players for Chattanooga to throw in, goes inside of the 18 yard box. 1904, that's Samira able to dump that one out and once again Chattanooga trying to come up with an attack tried stopped by Rogers tried the heel pass there there wasn't communication but it was a good idea Austin Rogers was up to the task free ball it was Benito that was putting in the pressure Nineteen oh four here rotating the ball. We got the Chattanooga players a little bit of a press, not a full on press to get the ball back, but nineteen oh four showing some patience, see where they can find the weakness in the uh, defense. So as you're talking about it, Daniel Jackson, those two goals, the first one came in the 14th minute against Maryland Bobcats FC, and in the very same match in the seventy fourth minute will score his second one. 1904 here with an opportunity. Merlo Paunesa trying to push through, get through his marker, trying to look for the through ball. Just a little bit off with that pass. Almost got through for the one-on-one -on -one chance for the score. And now here comes Chattanooga FC with a counter attack. Trying to come up with something. Trying to look for Jerry Desdundes for 1904. Initially to come up with that opportunity. 1904 having to put the ball in reverse. Through ball to Baunesa. Back to the defenders. Benito coming up on the sweep. Taps and goes. Gives it over to Hurdle Baunesa. Gives it to Desdundes. It's a two on one. Baunesa trying to have the And there it is at the top corner. Golasso, what a nice pass. Took advantage of the positioning. Good spacing by 1904 here as they celebrate the lead that they know they should have had in the first half. Crucial, crucial goal to start the second half. Edward Benito coming in with goal number two on the year, and it's a huge one. How the goose eggs crack. And taking the words right out of my mouth right there, Hector, an absolute goal lasso. She saw from the replay there, Matt Hurlow did a good job in his rotation of the body. The defenders were, went towards him, just had enough time to pass it over to a wide open colleague that scored the goal. So we've been looking for this all match long, 1904. 
they've been trying to work all night long as well. Now you hear the fans getting into it. That's what they were waiting for the whole game. That goal that was eluding them for the full, whole first half. So now Chattanooga having to play from behind. And here's another good attack for 1904. Desdundes having a big role on that attack for 1904. He's got some really good ball handling skills for 1904. This Dunde is not afraid to fly up the pitch and handles the ball very well. Chattanooga here on the attack. Good pass. Trying to get the cross. Very easy for Austin Rogers to handle. And if you're Chattanooga FC, you really need to put some more pressure on Rogers. That was a, that was a good idea actually that 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 kick into the box there was nobody there unfortunately for Chattanooga but they know that there's still plenty of time left for them desperation shouldn't kick in quite yet but they can't give up another goal and go down to nothing on the road. And Rogers looking for his first shutout of the year. Chattanooga they're going into this one with one shutout. And 1904, looking for those three points. Chattanooga FC also looking for those three points. Trying to work from that left flank. Having to push this one back. Cutler coming up with the pressure. Comes up with a cross. 1904, not quite out of the woods just yet. Chattanooga still knocking on the door. Switching up the field, well done by good, 1904. Good deflection right there. That could have been a potential one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Now it's just a throw in for Chattanooga. And it was the newly addition, Jonathan Caparelli. You mentioned it, Hector. Caparelli coming in as a newly acquired defender and bringing him in to try to add some additional defense there for 1904. And already doing his job well tonight, being a key factor in keeping this match to a one to nothing lead. This Dundes pushing forward, getting double teamed there, giving over, over to Benito. One on one, Benito showing off some tap dancing moves. Chattanooga, not a single bite. Woodfin acting like he has seen it before. Good back. patience here by 1904, by the way. They know they got the lead now. They know they got the momentum back on their side. Don't have to force the issue here. Just take your time. Make them come to you. And at this point, you really can be as patient as you want. You do have that once nothing lead. There's Dundes getting taken down, but play on is what the officials say. Huge sigh of relief for Chattanooga FC. Otherwise, that would have been a free kick in very dangerous territories. Dixon. Over to Alec McKinley. Still trying to work. And easily the ball going the other way. Yeah, that was a good whistle by the referee. There was contact. 1904 did have the possession there. Dallin Cutler, give him some instructions. This assistant coach mode is kicking in right now. I mean, I think this is the guy that has all the rights to be really instructing his team. He has the biggest tenure for 1904. He has been here since the inaugural year for 1904. As once upon a time, 1904 used to play at Qualcomm Stadium, the home of San Diego State football. And now, if you go down to the sites of formerly known as Qualcomm Stadium. Won't see a thing, folks, has been already torn down and the new project already getting started. It'll be an interesting idea, interesting plan to see what 1904 will do moving down the line. 
old home for 1904 Chattanooga FC now coming up with attack and there's the cross and once again well done there by the defenders for 1904 yeah careless loss of possession there by 1904 they should just kick the ball away too much ticky tack and that created a chance for Chattanooga Shannon Wright the defender for 1904 the initial player that put the stop to the attack See if anything is planned here by Chattanooga on the corner kick. Two players there near each other. Looks like it's just going to be a cross into the box. Cameron Woodfin was one of the players that was hovering over the ball. He backs away. Corner. Too easy for 1904. Woodfin now over it. Going to give it another shot. Coming up with a cross. A header. And there it is. The equalizer for Chattanooga FC. Perfect cross right there. By Chattanooga FC, nothing Austin Rogers could do. Much needed goal, we'll see the replay right here. There's the cross, wins position. Basically, close to a point blank shot right there. Austin Rogers did his best, but now it's a tight game. Midfield player Alec McKinley coming in with the goal. That was the goal in the 54th minute of the match. See how 1904 reacts right here. Interesting to see if they can regain the momentum, not get desperate, not make erroneous mistakes here that could have cost them before. Still plenty of time left in this game. We've got ourselves a brand new ball game here, folks. All equaled out at one here in Canyon Crest Academy. We told you, folks, that the second half was definitely going to pick up. These are two teams, very good second half teams, duking it out here in Canyon Crest Academy. Watching 11 Sports via TV Emax. Alex Neveja alongside of me is Hector Trujillo. And here comes Woodfin once again. He was on the assist to McKinley. And 1904 with an easy stop. Desdundes trying to go the other way. Very quick tap and go to Wolfgang Prentice to Benito, who is responsible. Good through ball. No flag up. Desdundes over oh. hooking the shot, sailing right. That was a good job by Alec Reddington, though, coming out, closing off the space. It was a clear one-on-one -on -one right there. He just angled it a little bit, tried to get too technical with it. Had a couple options here, one-on-one. -on -one. You can see Alec Reddington didn't give himself up either way. Missed opportunity for 1904. Saw Richard Dixon and Sean Russell Jr. being very late to the party. But still better late than ever there on that opportunity. And this Dundas, he's going to be thinking that one. He's going to be thinking about that one all match long. Did you see the way that he was just rushing down the pitch? Oh, yeah. The defenders were caught flat footed on that one. He had all the momentum behind him. I think he had a little bit more time than he thought he did. He actually had an option there to try to flick it over Reddington, but. Like I said, Reddington, he's seen those before. He didn't give himself up, and a good job by him. This dude is leaving both Dixon and Russell Jr. staring at his taillights. Really nothing that you could do, but 1904, here they come on a pretty good attack. Pushing inside of the 18-yard box, trying to get the cross to Benito. All of a sudden, this game's gotten really wide open in terms of the attacks. Both teams uh, pressing up and giving up. The counterattack, I think uh, 1904 feels that they should still be up, but now it's a totally new ball game. See what they can do here with a throw-in from Dallin Cutler. You really do have to appreciate the amount that this match has picked up. And going back to that patience aspect for 1904, well done by Chattanooga trying to conflict with the offensive plans there for 1904. So it's a legal slide tackle there for this Dundes. Losing his footing, goes back to the defenders for 1904. Cutler seeing a window open. And you'll see the ball out. Jonathan Caparelli. Got a player down here for Chattanooga FC. 
I don't see any contact really. I think it might just be maybe a hamstring issue or something. I mean, cramp. I mean, it is pretty cold here in San Diego, California. Here we see the replay right here. Oh, here's the counter actually. That's plenty of time. And again, Reddington right there on the spot. That's what you got to do as a goalkeeper. Close as much space off as possible, giving us give him as many little options as possible to, to force the shot. I believe the player that's down is Alec McKinley, who's responsible for the goal in the 54th minute of the match. Yeah, it looks like a hamstring issue right there, flexing the leg. Gives both teams an opportunity to catch their breath. There's been a lot of action in the last few minutes running up and down the field. I don't know if he'll be able to continue. He's shaking his head. Doesn't look too good right now for him. You can only hope for the best for Alec McKinley. He has been a warrior here in this match and responsible for the lone goal and the equalizer here in this one in Canyon Crest Academy. Here's another opportunity, 1904. Here's a replay of the goal, actually. Beautiful rotating pass. And there's the goal lasso. Here's a replay of the tying goal for Chattanooga FC. Cross, great positioning. Again, Austin Rogers can't do much with that one. And it looks like McKinley able to get up on his feet. He has a very slight bit of a little bit of a hinge on him. Not exactly walking very straight. Just ever so slightly hanging on to that right hamstring. Physio going to assist him out. It looks like there is a player waiting to come into the match. Yeah, it looks like it'll be Alec McKinley that's going to be leaving the game, obviously. We come uh, number 13 coming in. Cutler Charles Coleman for Chattanooga FC. New player. See Charles Coleman coming into the match. That was a nice little break for both teams. Catch their breath. See if they can create more chance and continue the intensity. Still 30 minutes left in the game. Strong. Switches up the field. A little overcooked to Wolfgang Princess's liking. As 1904 still staying pretty hungry here in this attack. Now it's Chattanooga FC. And strong to Desdundes. Works that one over. Through ball. Looking for Edward Benito. Very quickly, Reddington booting this one the other way. Caparelli to Strong. Looking for Herlo Paunesa. Bumps into Chattanooga FC player. Getting double teamed. In this one, forward progress for 1904. Pushing this one back ever so slightly. Back to their center back. Back to Strong. And to right. And to Jonathan Caparelli. The run for 1904 here, being very methodical in their possession, knowing there's still plenty of time left. Dallin Cutler looking for an open player. Need to see a little bit more movement from them, though. They're a little bit too methodical at, at the moment. Short throw in. Decides to go to his midfield player, Samuel Gomez. Cutler can't handle that one. And during the half, you mentioned that it was Detroit City FC that came up top against the LA Force. Yep, now they have a six point lead over LA Force, plus the uh, goal differential. And um, yeah, everybody's trying to catch up with those guys. This is a must win for both teams right now for the same reason. There's Chattanooga. Dixon. Pushing inside of the 18 yard box. 
Tries to get a through ball. Well done by Samuel Strong. Yeah, good reaction by Strong. Otherwise, it wasn't a good shot opportunity for Chattanooga. Coleman to Jackson. There he is. Shot. And easily handled by Austin Rogers. Guess there'll be a corner kick here. I guess the ball went out of bounds. Chattanooga players were not happy with that call that they thought it was a corner kick. So another chance here for Chattanooga FC. Daniel Jackson was already coming up with his his moves, trying to get through his mark. Here's the corner. It's been coming slightly short. 1904 boots down away, and we'll go to try it again. Yeah, 1904 needs to be careful here. They already gave up one header for a goal. Chattanooga FC is good at finding open spaces, even though there's not a lot of open space. So they have to keep their antennas up for this one on defense. Midfield player Ryan Marcano was subbed earlier in the second half. There's a corner and a good one indeed. And 1904 able to put a stop to that one and just perfect placement on that corner. Yes, the deflection didn't help 1904 FC. That they did get a shot off. Chattanooga did, but um, wasn't a strong enough shot to get through the defense. Looks like we're going to have Christian Snyder coming in in a second for 1904. Create some opportunities there in the midfield for them. Regain possession. Possibly more, more counter opportunities. There's a good one, good through ball, and once again, Chattanooga FC coming up with back-to-back -back goals. This one to go ahead, goal. This was unlucky for 1904. Chattanooga FC, right man at the right spot. See the replay here. A good throw and long throw in by Chattanooga FC. Good header, back. And again, Austin Rogers was able to get a deflection on it, but the ball was too strong. And now it's 2-1 Chattanooga FC. Goal coming in in the 67th minute by Marcus Nagelstad. And just a clear cut throw in a couple of volleys. And it was Marcus Nagelstad having an HD vision of the net. All he had to do was just tap it in. And Rogers even assisted on that one. The shot was off of his knee. Ended up getting the deflection going in the back of the net so now it's Chattanooga with the two to one lead here in this one back to back goals and it'll be interesting to see how 1904 reacts they had the substitution just a few seconds before the goal came in they're definitely going to press the attack again so if you're 1904 what's the game plan moving forward now going into the 68th minute still no sense of desperation though there's still some time left. They've half created chances. We have another one potentially here, even though they lost possession. It's one of those things that they know they've had their chances. Now it's time to like step it up a little bit. Can't create any more mistakes if you're 1904. Otherwise, you'll be digging yourself a hole here in this one. Caporelli and his home debut has been doing a pretty solid job inside of the 18-yard box. It's been been keeping Chattanooga FC pretty off balance tonight. Well, one thing's for sure now, we're not going to get a, a third straight 1-1 draw between these two teams, so that would have been, been the trifecta of trifectas there if that would have happened. Of course, both of these teams just looking for a win to get them back to moving up the, the table for NISA action. Free ball, coming over to Jackson. That's a bad man, a slide tackle. Ooh, this could be a card. Yes, there it is. Soleiman Samira getting the yellow on that slide tackle. Yeah, if we see the replay here, loose ball. He's coming in full speed. 
gets to the ball, but he gets him with the back leg there. A little unmeasured, according to the referee for the yellow card. So a set piece here on the right flanks, a two-man wall. There's Dundes and Caparelli. The two-man wall for 1904. Gasak with the free kick punched away by Rogers. Good, good deflection, good reaction by Rogers. This one's skied. Still trying to stay this, keep this attack alive. Chattanooga with some space and it bends away. Yeah, he tried the top corner on that one. Missed it by a little bit too much. But again, Chattanooga FC is not sitting back, just trying to milk the clock. You can see they're trying to create more chances and extend the lead. So it should be an entertaining final few minutes here. I mean, with all due respect, Chattanooga, they really are looking for as many goals as they can get, trying to lower down that goal difference number going into this match with zero goals of a difference. Would very much like to get that number up as some teams that are atop of them in the table. Stumptown AC going into tonight, their tonight's match with negative one goal difference along with a negative one goal difference for New Amsterdam as Chattanooga trying to come up with an attack. Negative six goal differential for Maryland Bobcats FC. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Stumptown already won their game. One nothing, was it? One to nothing. Yep. So they got their three points from today. And um, trying to be a competitor again for for the table, top of the table. And just looking at it tonight with Stumptown AC getting those three points, that'll bring them up to 15 points and just for sure able to leapfrog Cal United strikers at the meantime. Cal United won't play until tomorrow. They'll have a match. Got a whistle here. Somebody's going to get a yellow. Wasting time on Chattanooga FC. Cutler Coleman going to be called with the yellow. As we were talking about it before, Cal United playing tomorrow and playing against Maryland Bobcats. And at the moment, Stumptown Athletic Club atop of Cal United. And as we were talking about it before, it's how much of a difference one win can make. You get your three points, and it really allows you to skyrocket up to the standings. And what a thing to have in your resume, Stumptown Athletic beating Detroit City and snapping their 27-game undefeated streak. So definitely a team to watch out for the rest of the season, Stumptown Athletic. 27 straight matches. Very impressive. Any level of competition in soccer, regardless of what division it is, what level. 27 straight. That's We're entering globe, globe throttler territory right there. Almost pretty hard to believe right there. As Caparelli hovering over the ball at the moment for 1904 for the free kick. Just got to appreciate how much the race is just tightening up in the Nisa table. How teams that you didn't believe that had a chance for contention, they are now working their way to contention and can't really sleep on any team on the Nisa level. Good deflection for Chattanooga. Samira to this Dundes. Push forward. Benito, Samira, to right, almost getting this or taken away, much needed slide tackle play on, there is a man down getting up now for Chattanooga, 1904, has oh. the space and a good slide there by Alec Reddington, coming up clutch. Another good reaction by Reddington, split second, waited too long here, 1904 FC, you can see... I think it's Samuel Strong, yep, right there. 
he would have reacted half a second earlier, he might have had a shot there. Looking for Samuel Gomez. Samuel Gomez, correction. To be able to come in in that 18-yard box. A full view of the goalpost. Caparelli getting a lot of pressure on him by Jackson. Caparelli currently down. Able to collect himself. That right foot is what did it for him. Looks like we got another substitution coming in here. 1904. 1904 substitution, 12 in 19. Giovanni Vasquez. Shandon Wright exiting the game here. Giovanni Vasquez coming onto the pitch for 1904. What can you say about Giovanni Vasquez? Definitely a player with intensity. He can bring a different tempo. Go good with the ball control. And good at recognizing opportunities. And in the final 15 minutes, it'll come down to that. I think uh, 1904 is going to create a couple more chances at least in the remaining time. But they do have to capitalize now. Nito trying to battle it out for the ball. Gives it over to Gomez. Gomez once again with the ball. Switching up the field. Caparelli. To Strong. This Dundes. Gets through one marker. Can't go through the second one. This one is a bomb. Over to the 1904 18-yard box. Leave it to Rogers to come up with it. Strong having to come up with it to Samira. Caparelli. Samira. There's Vasquez. Flag goes up here. And Chattanooga FC, even though they tried to create more chances after taking the lead, I think. You might start to see them pull back a little bit, try to get keep the possession more, keep any potential chances of 1904 FC trying to game, tying the game. Seventy seventh minute here in the match, just thirteen minutes left for 1904. Still has some time to work with here. You guys are watching. 11 Sports via TVE Max. I am Alex Nabeja. Alongside of me is Hector Trujillo throughout this one. We've seen three goals tonight. Chattanooga in charge of the two goals of the night. First one coming in by Alec McHenley. Then in 13 minutes later, Marcus Engelstad coming in with a clear-cut shot inside of the 18-yard box. A throw-in by Sean Russell Jr., a couple of volleys inside of the 18-yard box, allowing Nagelstad to just tap it very easily to get the second goal for Chattanooga. And they're definitely still looking for some more. And, of course, being up only one, not enough. Yep, definitely something that 19-4 has to, like I said, keep pressing. Even though the clock is not in your favor right now, you don't want to give up too many chances in the back where a goal here could end the game for you if Chattanooga FC goes up 3-1. to one. So keep pressing, keep creating chances, but don't get a sense of desperation just quite yet. Coleman trying to get to Desdundes. To Russell. Long bomb looking for Jackson once again. Jackson trying to tap that one over to Coleman. Here comes Desdundes. Quick tap over to Benito. To Desdundes. No whistle. Play on. Reddington. To Jackson. Coleman. Through ball. And Vasquez. And that one mishandled by Samuel Strong. Was trying to boot that one the other way. Instead will be a throw-in for 
Chattanooga FC, it'll be Daniel Jackson. Looks like we got a player down for 1904. Edward Benito. Can be the player slow to get up. Grabbing at his knee, the back of his knee area. Trainer coming out to check it out. Next match in the slate for 1904 FC. Saturday, October 2nd, it'll be Chicago House AC coming in to San Diego. The first time these two teams will face off against each other. They'll play here in Canyon Crest Academy. Hope to see you guys here in this one. Hopeful that 1904 FC playing against a team that's in the bottom of the NISA standings, but can't really judge a team on where their standings are at. Anybody can really beat anybody here in the NISA level. Yeah, you can never judge them by the standings. The effort is always going to be... I've seen Chicago House play a couple of times. They always bring the effort there, so it's one of those games that they're going to go all out, get a win. So we'll see what kind of attack Chattanooga FC puts up here. Gets a low through ball. Was looking for the striker, Bement. Haven't seen a lot of action from Bement, and there's a long strike from a Chattanooga FC. It results in a goal kick for Austin Rogers. So Chattanooga FC pressing a little bit, pushing their lines forward, trying to prevent 1904 from getting a clear possession towards the midfield. And as for Chattanooga FC, They'll head on over to Championship Stadium to play against Cal United Strikers on October 3rd. That'll be an interesting game. Cal United, as we were saying a while ago, a team that's always contending, always up there, giving it their all. It's always a fun team to take in as well. You've got a handful of weapons there for Cal United. Beautiful stadium too, by the way. And a very beautiful city of Irvine as well. So we're now approaching the 82nd minute here in the match. Chattanooga FC, they have been in control here in this second half. In the first half, it was 1904 with some control over the match, despite it being scoreless. Yeah, we got another 1904 player down. Ball hit him right in the face. He didn't have time to react or even duck. Referee's going to pause the game here for a second. Player getting some water. Trainer talking to him. But we were talking about the, the Chicago House match. It's going to be one of those where... 1904 will play Chicago House here in San Diego. Then it'll be 1904 heading to the house of Chicago House. Yeah, they've created quite a fan base, even though they're a relatively new team to the league. A lot of followers on social media, very feisty, always defending their team. And like I said, you can't, like you were saying as well, you can't judge a, a team by their standings. I mean, it's not sometimes not because of a lack of effort. It's because sometimes the ball just doesn't go in for some reason and Looks like the 1904 player is just ready to get back into the field. Wolfgang Prentice being the player taking the ball off of the face. And as we were talking about Chicago House, having a stadium like SeatGeek Stadium, very nice stadium for Chicago House. First year in the league and already getting yourself a pretty nice stadium. And of course, when it's your first year here with Nisa Soccer, you always need that one season to get your feet wet, get accustomed to what the style of play is. And they're just getting a taste of it. And of course, a new team coming from Phoenix Valley United FC coming as well. It's good to see the league expanding. One of those things that you always want to promote soccer at all levels. Such a beautiful sport. And this was a league that only started a couple years ago. The inaugural year, it being a final of Cal United Strikers versus the LA Force. That was a nail biter there at Championship Stadium that would go down to the wire of PKs. And it would be Cal United that would win it in a penalty kicks. 1904 substitution, 10 in, 20 out. So we do see Ernesto Espinosa coming into the match. 
to you. And Mo Espinosa, ready to come in, make a difference in the final few minutes. Played with a lot of talent. Can create one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And this team needs them right now. They only got about s s six minutes left, plus whatever extra time the referee throws in there. And waiting for another sub to be made here for Chattanooga. So now here he comes. Ryan Marcano coming in for Chattanooga FC. And Chattanooga waiting for some more players to get into the 18-yard box. They didn't want to act too quickly. They didn't have any help inside of the 18-yard box for that attack. Good turn. Still plenty of time here in this match for 1904. And if you're Chattanooga, you're really just trying to burn as much clock as possible. Here's a chance for Chattanooga. Marcano. Cross. Dangerous cross right there. Literally 30 seconds into the game, and he makes his presence felt just a little too high for his teammate. Gotta love those subs right away, making a difference, coming into the match, and as you just said it, making the presence be known. And of course, players that are sidelined are always trying to make a good impression to see if they could start the very next one. Absolutely here. Let's see what what the call was. Referee blows the whistle. Talking to the 1904 FC player. Trying to calm down situations here. He's afraid it might get chippy again in the final few minutes, especially with 1904 FC pressing for the draw. And at this point, if you're 1904, you really do want to at least get a point out of the match as opposed to losing and not being able to get any points. And this would be sweet revenge for Chattanooga FC considering the way the previous match ended, giving up that goal in the final minute. They thought those three points should have been theirs at home, and now this would be a great way to get that bad taste out of their mouth. And most importantly, Chattanooga, they have not had the best of luck of playing away from home, and now tonight, just inching closer and closer to that first victory on the road. Gotta feel good for Chattanooga FC. Good to have a team playing very well at home, but you have to get the job done away from home as well. That's what makes you a successful team. Can't get homesick. Caparelli to Vasquez. Samura. Let's do this. Straight to the feet of Caparelli. Samura. Change of direction once again. Again, Chattanooga, good job with the pressure here, not letting 1904C breathe or even find any good spaces to do a, an attack. And the fact that Strong had to go back to his goalkeeper, and meaning a lot there, having to push 1904 back. Benito, volley off of the chest, was trying to set things up for Espinosa. Yeah, that was a good idea. Unfortunately, there was a miscommunication there and the pass wasn't that good, so. But still, 1904C is gonna keep pressing. And Ernesto Espinosa, another very familiar name here for 1904 coming into this match. Here's a guy that definitely has earned his way to every minute played and was a longtime starter for 1904. Definitely good memories with Mo Espinosa. Some very timely goals and some big matches and the, uh, a fan favorite to say the least, Mo. Desdundes trying to give that one over to Bendito as 
He is a bit shaken up. Trying to give it all over to Schneider. It's going to stay the, the San Diego way. A little bit of contact here in the middle. A little bit of a push. Referee was on right on top of it. Nick Spielman with that contact. With the, con the contact to Soliman Samira. Let's go at the final substitution for Chattanooga FC. Cameron Woodfin coming out of the game. Christopher Marshall coming in. Final few minutes. Tried to at least defend the one goal lead. And Woodfin, a well earned rest here in this match. Remember, he was the one that came up with the assist to Alec McHenley to get that first goal of the match. So, a well fought match there for Cameron Woodfin. As now these last couple of seconds becoming very much a factor as we're getting close to the time completely stopping and we're going to see how much time are we going to get here. I don't think we're going to get a very long stoppage time period. Maybe two minutes, if any. Flag goes up here, contact, follow 1904 FC. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm expecting at least uh, maybe three minutes. It wasn't as chippy as the first half. Not a lot of yellow cards being issued. So I don't know if the fourth referee... Four, Four minutes, minutes of stoppage time. The fourth official on the field has indicated there will be a minimum of four minutes of additional time remaining. In the so match. consider some time to work with here if you're 1904. Now, if you're Chattanooga FC, you want to try to stop them, slow them down the best that you can, and put as much pressure on 1904 as you can. Yeah, 1904 has to be in sellout mode right now. Whether you lose by a goal or two goals, doesn't matter. You just got to give yourself one more shot to tie the game here. This will be a very interesting next three minutes here of the match. 1904 going to be working with a sense of urgency. Caparelli. Through ball. And here's a ball inside of the 18-yard box. And Reddington coming for the rescue once again. Good reaction by Reddington. He read that the whole way. It looked like 1904 might have a chance there, but the expertise of Sir Alec Reddington coming to the show. What a night Reddington has put up tonight. Only permitting that lone goal to 1904. Here comes Benito. Trying to give it over to Espinosa. Well read by Chattanooga. Corner kick opportunity here for 1904. This might be their last clear chance to tie the game. Everybody coming up here into the box. Ryan Marcano. There'll be a throw in, actually. Ryan Marcano doing a little bit of everything here in this match, offensively and now defensively, coming up with that slide tackle. As Gomez trying to give it over to this, doing this. Came in from an offside position, flag goes up. Pardon me, that was Samira that was trying to come up with the attack. Uh, regardless, offsides call. Samara was offsides. And if you're Scott Morrison, you're probably going to be upset with the loss at home. But in terms of the effort, in terms of creating opportunities, 1904 was there. They had their chances in the first half, especially. Just couldn't capitalize. Had the lead, but gave up those two goals quickly, and uh, now they're in desperation mode. Cutler in midfield. And could be looking like the final minute of the match. Cutler getting that one inside of the 18-yard box. Free ball. And it'll be a corner coming up for 1904. Definitely their last clear chance right here. Final few seconds. Everybody's going to be in the box. Just trying to get a little bit of space there. See if they can get a, a header or something that can cause pressure on Alec Reddington. Espinosa, the corner, placing it well over the crossbar. 
Well, they got their chance. It did get right there where they wanted it. Unfortunately, the ball just went right over the crossbar. And it looks like 1904 is going to suffer a home loss. And it was definitely starting to get a little chippy, a little bit of a chin wag inside of the 18-yard box. Samuel Strong had a couple of words to say to Chattanooga as that's it, folks. It's Chattanooga FC with the team.